Hi there, Casey here from Mastin Labs. Thank you so much for joining us for this Lightroom tutorial on how to edit with Instant Every Day. Throughout this video, we'll be talking about what's included, some best practices, tips and tricks, and how this whole pack works together, including some of the new tools we made just for this pack. Let's go ahead and we'll hop into our first image and take a look at what's here. So I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna close this navigator for a second. Now, if you have not already, do be sure to run the installer where all of this stuff will just be loaded automatically um, into your Lightroom catalog. We do have the manual files if you're using Lightroom Cloud or CC, uh, but otherwise just running that installer is gonna get you where you need to go. Um, so here up top, we have our film looks where we have three looks that are our color instant film, as well as three that are black and white. We have our tone profiles, some AI tools, um, specialty tools for unique situations, some grain and some light leaks. So we'll go ahead, we'll start with our three-step workflow. Now, if you are unfamiliar, the three-step workflow is to apply a look, adjust exposure, and correct for white balance. Um, and it's really simple, and it helps a lot to dial in the consistency of your editing. So we'll go ahead, and I'm just going to apply this first look, uh, SX70 color. So I've applied the look, adjust exposure, maybe a little bit more brightness, and I think I'm going to warm it up. And just those three steps, we've gone from here to here. Um, just, yeah, really breathes a lot of light into uh, your photos. And I love how this looks. Um, if I wanted to further dive into some of these tools, um, we can talk about tone profiles first. Tone profiles are there to help with kind of tricky lighting or hard contrast situations. And they're really there to help either pull back some of those highlight, strong highlights or to add more. If you need more contrast, look to one of the hard profiles. Here we have all hard, which is pushing the shadows down and the highlights up and we have all soft which is doing the opposite it's recovering data in the highlights and the shadows and similarly with the the other following ones so highlight hard giving more or saving some of that highlight detail um, with this particular image i actually think all soft is a, a great addition to this image in general and it really just helps to soften it now with all of our presets we have the ability to utilize the preset slider uh, just right up here. So if I thought that this was too much or not enough, I can grab this 100 is sort of the default. I can go further or I can bring it back. And sort of at zero is where it was before you applied it. And 200 is double the amount of when it was initially applied. I actually think it looks okay. Maybe I'll dial it back just a touch, um, but there you go. So here's our quick before and after before we move on to our next image. All right, now for this image, we're gonna be using uh, P600. You can see it's sort of deep, rich colors. I really love the magenta it has in the uh, uh, undertones. This is sort of a, a moodier image, but even so, I've applied our look. Maybe I'll bring up the exposure just a hair, and I'm actually gonna cool it off. And by cooling it off, again, I'm helping, I'm adding some blues to that magenta, which is furthering it and pushing it in. If I wanted to, I can mean, I can really stylize this, you know, P600 and really any of the Polaroid films have sort of an unpredictable nature to them. So pushing something like this into it is gonna make it look good. You could even go really far. I don't know if you've ever seen some of those, uh, you know, Polaroids that just have a wash over the full image. And this is a nice way to do something like that. But for this image, I'm gonna go a little more natural. And so we'll go ahead and uh, I've applied my look, I've adjusted exposure and corrected for white balance. And here we are, here's our quick before and after. And <laughs> I love this photo. Um, this is uh, such a great image. And I think it looks just phenomenal with uh, this preset. Uh, if I want to, maybe I'll do shadow soft just to pull up, pull up a little bit of that um, detail in the shadows. Here we go from zero, 100, and I can go into, and we can, <clears throat> and we can start to take a look at our AI tools. And the AI tools are smart AI masks that are being applied that can help to augment and change some of the things that happen in your photos. Uh, for the first three, it's sort of they are more relighting tools. Uh, to a degree and so we'll go ahead and take a look at the first one up which is spotlight and spotlight essentially brings back brings down the exposure of the background and it brings up the exposure of your subject in a very um, sort of natural way um, as well as helps to balance a little bit of that contrast but what we wanted is a way to again relight a little bit of the photo so i'll take this back to zero so you can see where we started and as i bring it up slowly you can see how that's changing. 
it's really it's bringing up the shadows and here i'm seeing especially and bringing down this in a really natural way i actually think at 100 this looks like perfect i i, I love it there um and yeah it looks nice um, our other tools which are light and area assist are going to brighten up the entire image and i'll go back and i'll bring this to zero i'm going to brighten up the entire image and also drop the contrast a little between the two um, and it, it just does it in a nice way it can be so challenging to get a light and airy edit that this tool in general does a great job now we started this off as a dark and moody edit so if i hit reset i'll go back to the beginning we'll apply my look and i think in my head oh i want this to be a light and airy edit so I'm going to brighten it up way more than I did before. I'm going to cool it off, and then we want it to be pushed into that light and airy region. Well, what are the other things I could do? I can do this, and look, that's such a different vibe than it was before. And you can push it further. It's, we did a really great job um, trying not to go too far with, uh, with the strength of this tool. We wanted it to be a useful tool, not an overpowered one. Our last look, the dark and moody edit, and I'll hit reset again just to bring us back to square one. I think P600 does a great job with the dark and moody edit. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit further. I actually really like those browns and warm tones when it comes to dark and moody. So I'm gonna lean into it. I brought down the exposure. I've now pushed a little bit more extra warmth into that edit, and I'll go to dark and moody, and there you go. It is just, it adds a little more fade to the image and a lot more depth. Again, we're, we're touching the background, we're touching the subject individually and creating this really great contrast between the two that is can be a challenge to get, but with this, it really makes it a lot easier. And uh, one of my favorite things, especially with this tool in general, is that after I apply it, I will go in and I will apply 35 millimeter grain. Um, we have our grain tools and we'll get to the ones in our specialty tools as well. But the grain tools are there to help add texture. Now, I know 35 millimeter is not, <laughs> it's not a Polaroid. That's not how that worked. Um, but we love these grain tools so much that we wanted to make sure to put them in your hands and make sure that you could add that same texture. Um, but there you go. Let's go ahead. So here's our before and after. And it's just, it's such a different look. And it's, it's amazing. Um, okay, we'll move on to our next image. And for this one, we'll be using Instax Color, which... Uh, it was a surprise favorite of mine. And this is flat and matte uh, out of the gates. It still has a lot of color to it too, which was really great and unique. It reminds me honestly a lot of uh, Kodachrome uh, in a lot of ways, just with the color palette in general. But I've applied my look. I'm gonna bring up our exposure. Um, you can see there's just a lot of um, beautiful flatness to this. Now, one thing that is unique, particular to this preset, is it's the first color preset that we have actually baked in grain. One of the things with Instax that we love so much is how soft it felt. And so the grain in Instax is big, it is soft, um, and it really helps to add to this sort of blooming effect that we found within um, the images that we applied it to. Uh, we love it so much. So I've applied the look, I've adjusted my contrast. I'm gonna cool it off a little bit. Um, and yeah, it's just, it looks awesome. So take that toolbar off. Now we have one of our other specialty tools uh, that we can take a look at is our orange reduction. And orange reduction just works to help dial back some of that overly orange uh, color that you may find. Um, in Instax, it dials it way back because of how strong it is. But again, we can bring it back to where it was and just slowly push it in as we need it. So maybe something around here, and that looks pretty good. We have our lens correction tool, which I don't actually think will work on this image because I think the correction is baked in. But if I go back here and roll over lens correction, you can see that that's fixing some of the distorting and vignetting uh, around the edges. So here's before and after. Um, one of the nice things about the lens correction tool is it can, in some instances, really help to balance the exposure from top to bottom and bring back a little more light if you are um, struggling with those hard vignettes on the edges. Uh, Auto Transform is a perspective guidance tool, uh, and it just it, it works to help to um, sometimes straighten, but usually just fix some of the weird angles in an image. It's not perfect, but it does a nice job, and it can get you there most of the time. In an image like this, where I've applied it, you can see it did fix um, some of those edges. What I always suggest is if you are going to use Auto Transform, make sure you use lens correction first, then turn on Auto Transform, and then just check your lines. So for instance, on this one, this line is actually the line I would want to straighten for. So I'm just gonna go ahead, have my grid on, and there we go. 
Now I know my perspectives are a little bit better. Um, and actually, I'm going to go a little further. There we go. Right there. And that's looking pretty good. Um, below that, we have dynamic noise reduction. Now, Lightroom itself has a great denoise functionality. It is phenomenal and perhaps one of the best out there. Um, but sometimes you don't want to have to select uh, a ton of images and apply their denoise tool, which takes time. It also it creates new DNGs of all your images. Sometimes you just need a little bit of noise reduction. And so we have our dynamic noise reduction tool um, which works to help with some of that high ISO noise and it scales the higher up in ISO that you shoot. So at a base of say, you know, 100, it's not gonna apply any uh, uh, any noise reduction because at ISO 100, there's just not much there to not much there to correct. Um, versus if you shot at 6400, it would uh, kick in a lot more. So on this particular image, you know, so this is uh, ISO 320. Let's see, check the, some of these other ones we have ISO 400. So if I click dynamic noise reduction, and if I scroll down, let's see, I'll minimize this. And if I scroll down to detail and look in my manual noise reduction, you can see that that luminance has kicked in. If I just hit undo, you can see it goes to zero. And if I go to uh, uh, this next one, which was, this is ISO 320, and you can see those values are different than they were on the 400. In any case, um, let's move on to our next tool and next preset of the edit. Uh, the next preset, which is SX70 black and white. And SX70 black and white is awesome. It has just, it has good contrast. It has good fade, good depth. I love it. It is, um, it is crisp. It is wonderful. It's everything I want in a black and white preset. And I'm really just having a ton of fun with it. And on that, I want to talk about one of the other AI tools that we had that we didn't get a chance to talk about before, which is Skin Smooth. Now, Skin Smooth doesn't fix blemishes, but what it does is it looks at the skin and it helps to reduce some of the contrast and tonality with the skin, which helps to remove the visibility of blemishes, but they're still there. So if you need to take something out, you'll still need to do that. But this softens that a lot, which is great. And it just it, it targets the skin in images um, using the native tools of Lightroom. Again, with all of our tools, we have that slider. So if this feels like too much, it feels like starts feeling like plastic, you can dial that back and bring it back to where it was. Or if it was not enough, you can push it further. Um, but I think even just at 100, this is, looks um, a lot better from here. It's just adding a certain softness and glow to her skin, which I think does a great job. One of the other tools that we didn't talk about uh, is Strobe Soften, and I wanted to wait for this image as well. And Strobe Soften is there, and it just is another tool that is helping with contrast. It's built, if you are shooting with on-camera, off-camera flash, to reduce the strength of some of the contrast that can be added into a photo when you are shooting with an, a strobe. Um, it's great. It helps to maintain the color palette if I'm using it with something like this, and I use Strobe Soften it is reducing that contrast. So here's where we started, here's at 100. And then if I go to 200, which is you know double that initial value, you can see that those colors and tones are still there. They're just dialed back. And it's much different than if you were to change the slider from the actual preset uh, application itself. Um, strobe reduction is, is probably my favorite tool when it comes to softening and attacking some of those hard, challenging um, strobe contrast situations. Now we'll move on to this last image. We'll talk about these next two uh, black and white presets. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'm going to do this first. Uh, do this first one. P600 is a darker but still softer contrast preset. Um, if I bring up the if I bring up the exposure, you can see just how soft this contrast is. It has it's more faded than uh, SX70 black and white. But I, I still love this. Is it kind of reminds me of maybe a, an HP5 film, um, which I, yeah I think looks phenomenal. Um, and uh, we also have Instax Black and White, which is has a little bit of sort of a blue tint and is very different. And it has again a similar softness and quality that we had in the Instax Color. And you can sort of see that with the detail right away. So here's these sharp lines, sharp edges. Well, if you are looking for a softer more ethereal black and white that brings up skin tone, adds luminosity. This is the one. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful black and white. And there's even a small hint of blue fade, like a silvery blue fade that comes into this uh, preset. And we, we loved it so much, we wanted to keep it and uh, have that be available for you. We love how it looks. Um, so 
with this image. We'll go ahead, we'll talk about uh, one of the final tools and our specialty tools, as well as our AI tools. I guess I'll start with AI. And the first one up is Sky Save. I'll click Sky Save, and you can see it's adding a sort of a neutral density filter from the sky, but it's it's only touching on the sky. It's um, you know it has o only has presence there. But if I remove this, and you can see I can just bring it in however I want. And one of the things that I really love about this, especially like in a lighting situation like this, is by bringing in just a little of the Sky Save, I can really help to direct the viewers down. You know, our eyes as a viewer of images always goes to sort of the brightest most contrasty areas and in this photo in particular it's this you know it's the subject of the photo it's this person right here so by coming from nothing and bringing it in i can really direct that viewer's eye we do want to be careful with this one you can get some haloing if you go too far you know lightroom is always getting better um, but this is a, a really great tool uh, and just applies a nice little layered neutral density mask over here um, I think for this one, I'll just bring it in a little bit. I just want a presence of it. I don't need it to be full strength. Sometimes I do, but not in this instance. So, okay, I think that's looking pretty good. We'll go before and after, although this being a black and white image, the difference is pretty staggering. Um, <laughs> I do want to talk about our last um, uh, our, our last preset that we haven't really touched on, and that is the instant fade and grain. And so well, I'm going to move back to this image. We've done a lot to it, but I'm going to hit instant fade and grain, and it is adding a big fade and a big grain. Um, so this grain is going to be similar to Instax, but you can see you can really just dial in the fade, and that's where we wanted it to be. We wanted to add a little bit of grain. Oops. We wanted it to be focused on the fade. It's adding a little bit of softness from the grain, but for the most part, we wanted you to have just, again, more control over what your image is. So here's that nothing, and then slowly we bring that up, and we can make it as faded as you want. Um, especially when you're looking at older Polaroids or Polaroids that are maybe had a little bit of a leak in it, like a light leak. Um, sometimes it's just they're unpredictable and they can look like this. So giving yourself this control can just help to dial in that authenticity. So if I have all these things applied and I decide, man, I want to take some of these away. I need to reset this, get back to square one. I'll go ahead. I'm going to click my reset tone and tools. It's going to go through. It's going to remove um, any of the tone profiles, the spotlight, AI tools, any of these special two tools and just kind of get us back to uh, where we started so that we can start over or what have you. Um, but this is a, it's a great tool to get back to that beginning place. We have our grain tools next, which are there to add some texture. So with this particular image, I'll go ahead. I'm going to put 35 millimeter grain on it. Um, and again, it's just adding a little bit of that texture to the image. It's adding uh, just, yeah, a very small amount. If I go back to reset, you can see it goes away. Medium format is a finer grain. It's still texture, but it's not as chunky. Um, but I like this. And for this image in particular, I think it looks great. Um, and so, okay, that takes us to our last section, this new section, another new tool for us, which is our light leaks. Um, and light leaks, similarly to if you had uh, a leak in where your film was, you would get these leaks. So I'll go ahead, I'll apply the first one. And you can see it's it's strong, it's overpowering, just like light leaks. But with our slider, we can dial that back. I can just add a hint. Um, and if I go to the next one, it overrides and it changes. Here's another one. I bring it back, bring it forward. Just add a little bit of fade, a little unpredictability. Now, each of these masks has three different layers. And here you can see all the tool reset layers. Um, but we can dial those in. If I don't want that one there, there we go. If I don't want that one there, there we go. And you can sort of mix and match how you want these to look if i go to my next my first light leak we have those three layers again i can dial those in i like that one and maybe i like that one or i like that one but i don't like i don't want this overpowered one or if you really want to get into the nitty-gritty i can take this i can click on this layer and now i have control over that very specific layer i can just dial that back i still want a little presence of that warmth in the top right but maybe not all of it in any case uh, all of these light leaks you can apply individually and if you decide you aren't sure about them or you want to take them away, start fresh, you can click Reset Light Leaks and get back to that point. But there you go. There you go. There's the edits for Lightroom and in, uh, Instant Every Day. But we still have a little more for you. One of, the, one of the really cool things that we added to this pack and that we wanted to make sure was kept was to add a frame. You know, it's something that's such a big part of the uh, Instant Film look is these frames. So... Now we'll go ahead, I'll, I'll select, uh, yeah, see, um, I'll select this image. I think this is a pretty good one. And we're going to go 
where we would normally be in our develop module, I'm going to go over to our print module. And in our print module, you'll see these different instant everyday frames. On these frames, I can click at a uh, our square frame, just like you would see. We can move this around. Actually, I'll move back to this uh, image. I thought, I'm not sure why it kicked over to this one. There we go. Um, I can adjust this up and down. I can pick my cropping. Um, I can, we can go to Instex, a wide frame. We can go to mini, that thin frame. I feel like I see so much at weddings. Um, and then we have the, the FP100C, which we don't have a preset for, but we do love the frame so much we wanted to make sure to include it. Um, so these frames are so great and you can really just mix and match between so here's that that one with the car man okay <laughs> yeah i love how this looks i think it looks awesome um and if you are done you like how this looks you just click print to file you can type in the name you select where you want that to go um, and it will spit out a jpeg that you can share on social media they're great for that um, i think it's a nice way to give yourself a little something different um, and is uh, also really cool to print in any case there you go. There's all the tools that we have. Thank you guys again so much for joining us for this editing tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at mastinlabs.com or directly at m.me forward slash mastinlabs. Until next time, have a great day and happy editing.